Hi, Bob Canote, and on this episode of the Camp Chaos Chronicles, we're going to show you how to take something like this and turn it into something that looks like this. Dang it. So what's the plan here? Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a pressure washer and we're going to get rid of all the loose grease, dirt, and other debris that we possibly can before we start getting serious with chemicals. After that, what we're going to do is compare two different ways of doing it that I've used. Both of them yield pretty good results, but, uh, but there are differences. The first one of these is the good old fashioned tried and true gunk engine degreaser, the original. And this works really well. It, uh, it cuts the grease, it gets down to metal pretty well. And for what I do usually, and that is to get it as clean as I can and then take it in to, uh, to a shop that then puts it in their ultrasonic cleaner, this is the stuff that, that I use for that. It's relatively cheap and uh, and I use it quite a bit. The other one is one that I discovered on YouTube and uh, it does a really good job with limitations and that is Easy Off Oven Cleaner. And this stuff will get down to the metal, guaranteed. This, if the point is to get it clean, this is my product of choice and I'll show you why. Uh, the, the problem is it, it, it discolors the metal, it models it, and uh, you can minimize that some degree by scrubbing it a little bit after you after you shoot it on but it does have a little bit of an issue in that regard but again if the point is to get it clean this stuff will get it clean you just don't want to leave it on too long because it will actually start uh, working a little bit on machine services and the jack shaft bearings which uh, you don't want to replace if you don't have to so let's get this thing pressure washed I can't say that this is one of my favorite jobs, but anyway. The engine is not in really bad shape. It's got a lot of baked on grease in the nooks and crannies. The reason that most of these are out of the car is because they're running hot and that tends to really bake on the, the grease and oil from about the middle of the crankcase on down. So we got some of that going on. Not as bad as the, uh, the engine that we just rejected here in the last episode, but, uh, but it's, it's, not, it's gonna take some work. So the first thing we're going to use is the gunk engine degreaser. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to use it on one side of the engine, the A side or the right side of the engine. And we're going to use it according to the directions and see how that works. So the instructions say spray it on a dry, cool engine, let it sit for three to five minutes, and then hose it off. Well, what we're going to do, oh, and shake well. What we're going to do is after three to five minutes, we're going to scrub it and then we'll shoot it again and let it sit for three to five and see how it does. Well, the light isn't great, but I think we can keep it. You know what? That's not bad. It's still got some staining on it, but you'd really have to get aggressive with like bee blasting to get it a whole lot better than that. So let's turn it over and do the other side with oven cleaner. 
see what happens. Now, if you're cleaning your oven, the directions are you can do it warm or cold. We're doing this cold. Basically, you shake it up, you spray it on, you wait three to five minutes, and you, uh, you clean it off. Now, we're going to use the same protocol here as we did with the gunk. We're going to shoot it, we're going to let it set three to five, scrub it, and then shoot it again. Maybe do a little brushing, wire brushing as well. So, see what happens. Well, it's been five minutes and you can still see that it's bubbling happily away here. I mean, this is, uh, I mean, this is some aggressive stuff. I think this is going to be our winner. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this up and give it another shot. And, uh, and then uh, give it another three to five. Well, this has been another five minutes. And look at that. Pretty ugly. I didn't know there was that much crap in there. Let's go ahead and shoot this stuff off of here and see what it looks like. Well, I think if we're honest, we got a clear winner here. Now you notice there's sort of a white, I don't know if it's a residue or just a surface that has been acted on by the oven cleaner that is sort of a whitest surface. Uh, it'll, when this all dries out, it'll get a little less white and uh, Gonna take some Scotch Bright and buff that up, and that'll turn a real nice aluminum color. Let's roll this over and compare it to the other side. You know, this isn't this isn't bad either. But now, as far as this stuff is concerned, I believe we're gonna have to go with the heavyweight, the oven cleaner. So, but keep in mind, this is just the beginning. There's a lot of cleaning that needs to be done besides this. We've got to clean the oil galleries. we got to clean uh, the threads and the bolts. we got, I mean, there's just a ton of stuff to do. Normally it takes about 10 hours for me to clean a block to the point where I, I feel that I'm ready to put it back together again. I mean, you also got to clean the nuts and bolts and, and uh, the caps. And there's just a ton of stuff to clean up besides this. But when you get done with this, kind of feels like you're on the home stretch as far as a short block is concerned. So what we've done here is we've used the oven cleaner all over the engine. And on this side, we took a wire brush in an electric grill and kind of buffed all that white residue off. And that looks actually better than we needed it to look. That Jaguar logo there, I just sort of did for grins and giggles. You can see that on the bottom, this is just one application of the oven cleaner. And you can still see that there's some, uh, there's a beige tint to the sides, but uh, we can get that later with uh, acetone and some Scotch-Brite. And the other side looks like this, and you can see that it's still got that white chalky residue on it which does tend to dissipate with time, but it makes it look kind of uh, pale and anemic to begin with. This is the front, it doesn't seem to have done it here. That's just basically the way it came out after did the pressure washing. Now, <clears throat> we've got a lot of, now we've got a lot of work to do yet. You can see the Water jackets still have a lot of lime scale in there. That's got to be removed. Uh, that is essentially insulating the water jacket from the aluminum and uh, inhibiting the heat from the engine uh, radiating out. And I'm of the opinion that that's a significant 
that's a significant issue. Uh, it's why you want to use distilled water in your coolant. Uh, gotten a start on cleaning up the studs. You can see this is how they look right after you pull the head off. Pretty ugly. You got to inspect them for pits. These, there's a little bit of pitting right here, but these things are incredibly tough as anyone that has ever pulled one or two of these out of an engine nose. Got a little bit right here as well. But you know, it's actually more stained than pitted. So if this was gonna be a race engine, then I'd replace them. But a street engine, I think that's, uh, that's gonna work. So did a really good job. What we're doing at this point is Getting the bottom end cleaned up. Uh, I've got the caps, the bearing caps and the ultrasonic cleaner right now. Get those things cleaned up so, um, so we can do some measuring. At this point, we really don't know if we can use this block. Remember the other one we had to reject because the rear bearing bore was hammered out around. Um, I don't see any issues with this block, but you know, before I go any further, I wanna measure this block to make sure that it is usable because I've already got a block that needs to be a line board. Well, I finally had the time to sit down and actually measure this block out, and you know what? This one's gonna work. So it's onward and upward with this engine. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to try to do something about the scale in the cooling jackets of this block. And we've got kind of a weird and wonderful way that we're gonna try to remove this stuff with. So if you like these videos, like, subscribe, follow us on Facebook, and maybe leave some comments down below so that we know what we can do to do what we do better. So we'll see you the next time on the Camp Chaos Chronicles.